So now we've seen several examples of proofs involving sets, and they all relied uh, on the method where you, you, know, you start by saying that x be an element of one set, and then you show that it has to be an element of another set, and that forces the first one to be a subset of the other. And that's a great technique, right? It gets used a lot. There's a lot you can do with it. But it does have its limitations. Uh, one area where it can be a little problematic is when we're talking about the empty set. It's, it's questionable to start a proof off with let X be an element of a set when you know full well that that set doesn't have any elements. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture. We're going to look at several proofs involve, of statements involving the empty set so we can see you know, some techniques we can use to handle this situation. So what I want to start off by showing is that the empty set is a subset of every set. And I said that earlier. I said that a couple of lectures back when we were first talking about uh, the empty set. And, and I kind of just waved my hands at why a little bit, said something about vacuous truths and moved on. Well, in this, in this lecture here, we're, we're going to actually prove this. And the way we're going to do it is by contradiction. Right? So what I'm going to say is assume there exists a set a where the empty set is not a subset of a so what does this mean what does it mean for one set to not be a subset of another well this means that there must exist some element in the empty set, there must exist x an element of phi, uh, excuse me, x an element of the empty set, where x is not in A. Okay, but there's, a, there's our problem, right? But that's a contradiction. This contradicts the fact that the empty set has no elements. Therefore, the empty set must in fact be an element of A. And that's what we needed to show. So I've got another theorem for us here. Uh, this one claims that there is only one set with no elements. This is the kind of thing mathematicians worry about. Is it possible that there is more than one empty set? All right, well, this theorem is saying no. The empty set is unique. There's only one of them. So how can we show this? Well, we're going to do this the way uh, we uh, commonly show uniqueness. Right? I'm going to say let a sub 1 and a sub 2 be empty sets. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to say, okay, well, let's say there are two of them, All right? Then what I'm going to show is that this means that a one has to equal a two, right? That the two of them have to be equal to each other. Well, we saw on the last slide that the empty set is a subset of every set, right? Therefore, a one must be a subset of a two because the empty set is a subset of every set. All right, but that works the other way around as well, right? For the same reason, a two must be a subset of a one. Right, but remember all those proofs we did in the last lecture, right? We, we showed that if if one set is, if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a, then the two are actually equal. So therefore, a one is in fact equal to a two. So there is only one empty set, right, which is what we wanted to show. 
So I've got one more identity for us here. And this one is much more similar to the ones we talked about previously. Uh, where we're, we're just trying to show the two sets, two set expressions are equal to each other. And I'm, I'm going to do something uh, very, very similar to what we did back in the first example here today. I'm going to do this by contradiction, right? What I need to show, right? I need to show that A intersection, the empty set, has no elements. If I can do that, then it means that A intersection, the empty set, is the empty set. And that's what I'm looking to show here. All right, so how can we do this? Well, do, do this by contradiction. Assume A intersection, the empty set, has elements. That is, there exists an element X such that X is an element of A intersection, the empty set. Well, this means that X is an element of A and X is an element of the empty set. This is our contradiction. This contradicts the empty set having no elements. Therefore, our original assumption must have been incorrect, right? There our assumption that the empty set or is that that intersection has elements. So therefore, we can conclude that a intersection, the empty set, has no elements. So a intersection, the empty set, is equal to the one and only empty set. All right, there is only one, so that has to be equal to it. And that's what we wanted to show. So at this point, uh, you, you've got quite a few proof examples uh, to start basing your own proofs on. There, there is one kind of situation that we are still going to look at before we close out uh, this chapter. And those are proofs involving indexed collections of sets.